Before you ever get started writing a research article, you need to have two things. You need to have your research story and you need to know the journal that you're planning to submit the article to. If you don't know how to get these things, check out this video that's going to be linked in the description below that walks you through the four steps of writing and publishing your research article. And today we're going to fully break down the writing part of your research article. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister and I got my PhD in chemistry and now I make videos to help you complete your research more efficiently. So when you're starting your research article, you're obviously gonna start writing the introduction of your paper. Today, I'm gonna give you the full outline for your introduction. So the first thing that you wanna do in your very, very first sentence of your research paper is answer the question of why should someone care about your research field and the paper that they're actually going to be reading. This could be as simple as just telling someone why is your field or what you're studying is important. For example, a lot of the research articles that I write on steroid analysis start out with steroid analysis is essential for medical diagnosis, environmental testing, and sports performance testing. The main point of this sentence is to get your reader to keep wanting to read your paper. They need to understand what is the purpose of this paper, why should I care about it, and then they're going to be able to want to read more, which is going to help you guide your person through it, and especially guide your reviewers through your paper. The nice thing about starting out your research article like this is that it's really easy to just take whatever your research field is, so in my example, in that sentence would be steroid analysis, and then the very next sentence just explain what steroid analysis is. Or in my case, I could probably explain what steroids are. The next part of your introduction is gonna be all about the background information. What does a reader need to know to understand the study that you're presenting to them? This is often includes a little bit of background about your overall research topic, and then you wanna go from generic or general, so like just your overall research field, into more specific. So in my case, whenever I'm talking about steroid analysis, I would talk about what are steroids, how are, are they traditionally analyzed, and then what is the specific analysis method that I'm going to talk about in this paper. You can see how I basically created a funnel from this in that I started the most general, directly related to my first sentence of why my field is important, and then I get down to the specifics of what they need to know, all while trying to tell a story through it. Once your reader understands the basics of what they need to know, now it's time to jump into the context for your paper. And the most important thing that your context is there to do is to show the novelty of your work. It's to show this is what's come thus far, and this is why my paper is so important, because this is where the gap is in the field. So a good way to do this is just to take the last couple papers that led you to this research idea and to this project and just kind of detail out what they did, how they built on each other, and then what was missing in the field. So I could easily be like, paper A was able to show that derivatization can increase the separation of steroids. However, derivatization is difficult to do and can result in a loss of analyte. Then I can switch into paper B showed that you can use sodium to separate out steroids using their dimeric adduct. Okay, well, what is lacking in that paper that my paper is going to solve? However, it is not known what other group one metal adducts affect the separation of steroids. Right, so it's really simple, and I think a lot of people in this section try and write a literature review on their field, and that's not the purpose of this section. If you're trying to detail every single paper on this topic, you're going to have a completely disjointed paper because you're just putting a lit review inside your introduction, which isn't the purpose of this part of your introduction. It's just to show this is what's been done, these are the gaps, and this is how my paper is going to fill those gaps. And then finally, to close out your introduction, you wanna just create a summary of your paper. What is your paper going to cover and what can the reader expect to learn from your paper as they start going through it? This is so easy to transition because you've just created the gap. So you can say, in this study, we are going to explore how group one metal adducts affects the separation of steroid isomers. 
and then you can state some general conclusions or what is your novel approach on this that is going to get reviewers and readers to be more interested in, okay, they've actually studied the literature, they know what they're talking about, they know that there is a gap, and now they're filling it with this new novel approach. I'm gonna go ahead and read the rest of this paper. Next, you wanna jump into the methods of your paper. And this is actually a really, really simple section to write. All you really need to do is answer, if I was a reader trying to recreate this experiment, what information do I need to know? And then write it down. In your method section, there are a couple different types of sections that are worth making sure that you're including. For example, you need to include any preparations for an experiment. So if you're in like biology, this could be cell or animal work. If you're in chemistry, it could be solution preparation. If you're in instrumentation or a different field, it could be how you prepared your instrument or something like that. Then you want to include any experiments that were done. So include exactly what type of instruments are you using, what type of experiments were done, and all of that so that your reader knows how can they directly recreate your experiment or they know a different angle they can take on your experiment if you did it one way and they want to show that it also works another way. And then finally, you want to include your data analysis. So including the software that you did your data analysis in and any assumptions that you made in your data analysis or any procedures that you did specifically in your data analysis that there were alternative options to do as well. You also wanna include any statistical test that you performed. So that it's very clear to your reader what the actual assumptions were made in that statistical test that they're seeing the data in. Now we transition into the results section. And so in your results section, this is where having that research story becomes so imperative to be able to write a good results section. Because if you don't know what conclusions you're trying to make or what story you're trying to tell, it's nearly impossible to actually write a cohesive results section and it takes so much longer to actually be able to do it. This is the same as a novelist sitting down trying to write their novel and not knowing the characters that are going to be in their story, the plot points of their story, or even how it ends. How are they expected to just create this masterpiece when they have no idea where the story is going? And when you read some results sections of papers, you can see that they didn't know where their results section was going as they were working through it. In your results sections, you want to include how did you get the result for the conclusion that you're making? And this is usually just a keyword reference back to your method section. So you can say using X experiment or using X method, we did this. It just lets your reader know, okay, these results are directly correlated back to this specific experiment that was taking place. Then you want to share what your results are. And if you're having a hard time figuring out how to do this, look at the figure that you've crafted for your research story and just explain that figure. If you need to first explain it out loud or try to explain it to another person and then take what you wrote and just write that down in your results section. Finally, you want to have what is the conclusion from these results. And this is again gonna come from that research story, which is why before you ever start writing, make sure that you sit down and create that research story. And if you want help in doing this, download my free scientific research paper checklist. It walks you through how to create your story, select your journal article, and then includes all this information in here about how to write your research paper as well and then publish it. Now, in your discussion, you want to take from your results, take each conclusion you make in your results, and ask yourself two questions. The first is why. And so if you have any type of conclusion you're making, it's very simple to ask why. One of my conclusions in my first research paper was that collision cross-sections that were measured as monomers were more accurate than as diamers. And so then I ask, why is that the case? And this is where we start pulling from literature. Maybe we run an additional experiment as well to try and confirm this. And so from what I pulled from my literature, I was like, okay, it seems that having a biomolecular match or a gas phase conformation match in my calibrant and my analyte is what leads to the most accurate collision cross-section measurements. So if my collision cross-section measurements are accurate in monomers, which is what my calibrant was, but not in dimers, then 
it's because likely I need some form of multimeric calibrant to accurately measure diameters. And that was my discussion piece for that. So I was able to bring in previous literature showing this is what happens in this type of situation. And this is how we can ext extrapolate it to the current situation to understand why our conclusion is our conclusion. You can do the same thing if you find differences in a concentration of an analyte under a certain condition or a different behavioral change or any other conclusion you're making. You just want to take it one step further. Why is that conclusion true? Why is the result showing that conclusion? And explain the science behind it. The second question you want to ask is how does this fit within the context of the literature? And you might not answer this for every single question. So your why might actually show how this fits in the context of the literature. But sometimes you specifically want to say, hey, all these papers before actually said this. And ours is showing that it contradicts that. So let me tell you why is it contradicting that. I'm going to show you that it does. And then I'm going to tell you, well, we specifically use this method, which is showing these results where they use that method or some other thing. You need to explain that because especially if your paper goes out to a reviewer that wrote those previous papers, they're going to be like, well, this doesn't make sense. We've shown other work. So you need to go ahead and explain that out in your discussion section. And it's going to really help any reader who's trying to understand the field and is like, I read this before. Why is this different? You're helping explain that for them. The final part of your discussion is to explain how each of these conclusions moves the field forward. And so if I'm saying that CCSs are inaccurate and dimeric, then I need to say that as scientists, we should be careful about using these CCSs and investigate further better calibrants for these CCSs. This can be your ending sentence to that paragraph of your discussion, which then you can move into your next conclusion. And the final thing is you want to shape all of these paragraphs into an actual story. So that it's not it's individual paragraphs for each conclusion, but they're moving and transitioning into each other and you're building up to the final conclusion of your paper. Now we get to move into the conclusion section of your research paper. And this can be about one to two paragraphs and you're going to include five main things in the conclusion section of your paper. The very first one is we're going to hit on significance again. So just like we did in the beginning of our intro, we want to say, why is this paper important? Why is this field important? Because many people will actually read your conclusion section before they'll read any other part of your paper. Then we're going to jump into the key findings that are going to directly support your conclusion that you're trying to make with your paper. So if I'm trying to make the case that uh, steroids can be separated by different group one metals for dimeric species, then I'm going to want to put, okay, which, what was the resolution of certain steroids as separated by certain metals? Were we able to achieve a full separation for each of our steroid isomer pairs? Those are going to be my key conclusions there. The third part can either go in your conclusion sections or in your discussion section, and that is going to be the limitations of your paper. Did you have a small sample size, but this is still an interesting finding? Did you have um, something that didn't work and you know that you want this to get this to work in the future? That's all great to put in your conclusion section, and it's really helpful for future readers to investigate further research projects. Then directly from limitations, we're going to jump into impact. So if we've lowered their mood a little, we're reading the paper, we're going to heighten it back up with being like, this is why this paper is so important to this field. And then finally, we're going to tell them what to do next. We're going to talk about our future direction and tell them to next, we think that we should investigate A, B, and C. And then either you can work on investigating those things. Maybe you've already done those things. I actually, in my first published research paper, I put in a future direction that I had already completed and was going through publishing. So it links between those two papers that this was a future direction of that paper. And that is how you want to close out your paper is 
by just telling researchers where to go next, what to do next. Click or tap here to learn more about the publication process. And if this video was helpful for you, click the like button as it supports my channel and click subscribe if you want more help in how to complete your research more efficiently. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.